What's up, Roto Ballers? It's Pierre, the Roto Chef, here to help you with your lineup decisions for week 15 at wide receiver. Give you my three favorite must starts besides the obvious picks and give you a couple of players that you might want to consider sitting that you normally wouldn't. So let me start out by taking an opportunity to rip on the Jets uh, as a Dolph fan. Now, it's pretty obvious you want to start players against the Jets. And, you know, the narrative is the running backs, you know, you could basically get up off your couch and run for 100 yards against the Jets, which is true. But you can also pass on them, too. Don't forget. The last eight weeks, Jets allowing the fifth most fancy points per game to wide receiver. So, obviously, a smash spot for Jalen Waddle, who has been on fire, except Jalen Waddle is not playing because of COVID. So, just when you thought you could count on him as a league winner, you can scratch him off your list for this week. But then you can put Devontae Parker if you happen to have him. So Devontae Parker is a guy who is going to be now the top receiver. Uh, no, Will Fuller still not playing for the Dolphins, just in case you were wondering. Uh, so against the Jets, he's going to get probably at least 10 targets. I say that because this season, when healthy and actually playing, Devontae Parker is averaging eight targets a game. So he's had a few nice games here and there. He just hasn't done it consistently. And got to remember the first half of the year, we didn't see a healthy Tua. We saw Jacoby Brissett a couple times. We saw a banged up Tua. We saw some difficult matchups. This is not a difficult matchup. Devontae Parker is the only show in town, at least at wide receiver, that matters. And we don't even know if Miles Gaskin is going to play. He's still in the COVID protocol. Um, but even so, we don't need to worry about the Dolphins becoming run heavy because they just aren't that type of offense. Tua has been so good that they're going to let him win the game. I think Devontae Parker feasts. I got him as a top 20 wide receiver this week, and you should definitely have him in your lineup wherever possible. Now, a guy who is a little closer to being a regular wide receiver too is Brandon Ayuk. He's been coming on ever since he got out of the doghouse. He's been reliable. Now he gets Atlanta, obviously a good matchup. Thing is, we don't know San Francisco if Elijah Mitchell is going to come back because he's still been missing practice and the lack of running game that forces Debo to become the running back, which means IU kind of de facto becomes the wide receiver one. And we've seen what he's done. He's gotten six straight targets in four straight, yeah, four straight games. Uh, he's been targeted, so he's been somebody that Jimmy Garoppolo is looking to besides just Debo. And, of course, it's the Falcons. So good matchup. Falcons are the fourth worst against wide receivers in terms of fantasy points. So everything points to Ayuk being kind of a set and forget it wide receiver, too. Now I'm going to cheat here and pick two guys because we know Green Bay, Devontae Adams is it, and the other guys kind of alternate good games depending on game script and matchup. So if you watch the running back video, I talked about Aaron Jones as a guy I don't like this week because of the Ravens defense. Short version here is they're a funnel defense. They're giving up a lot through the air and just trying to stop the run because that's all they can do. Every single cornerback they have is hurt. Marlon Humphrey out for the season. Everybody, everybody is hurt. And so they're doing the best they can, but they're just giving it up. And this is a team that might be with a lot out Lamar Jackson, might not do a whole lot on offense this week. So expect a lot of points from Green Bay through the air. And, you know, Lazard had a nice week. Last week he had six catches, 75 yards, a touchdown, his best game of the season. MVS didn't do much, but a couple of weeks ago it was MVS who was having big games. Why not both, <laughs> right? Why can't they both have a big game in this contest where, again, the Packers are going to be able to and might be forced to pass and pass again. So I think either one of these guys, if you have them, you can feel good about them as kind of a low-end wide receiver three with upside. Don't feel good about Michael Pittman. Look, I like the guy. He's a great, talented receiver. He is the number one receiver in Indianapolis, and that's a good offense. But he's going to get one of the top cornerbacks, technically the top graded cornerback in the league in J.C. Jackson of the Patriots this week. They're not a team that shadows. I get that. But still, it's not like Pittman's been setting the world on fire as is, even with better matchups. He actually hasn't scored a touchdown since week nine, and he hasn't had any 100-yard games since week seven. That's not a wide receiver one. So for fantasy purposes, he has been inconsistent, like a lot of receivers are, but it's because of this offense. Of course, when they have Jonathan Taylor running the ball so well, you don't need to pass a lot. And in this game against New England, I don't think they're going to pass the ball a lot because it's very risky. So it's going to be one of those grind out, low scoring, boring fantasy games. But Michael Pittman is not really a guy I trust. I get that you might want to put him in your lineup because, yeah, he could score a touchdown, but again, the upside just isn't there for me. 
I'd rather take a chance on a guy like MVS, like I mentioned, sounds crazy, um, but I do feel like there's more potential here. And in a playoff game, you don't want a guy who just gets a touchdown and two catches. That's not going to do it for you. And then my must sit, uh, other one is going to be also in that Baltimore Green Bay game. Marquise Brown, Hollywood has not been showing up lately. And look, it's not just him. It's also Lamar Jackson. We see that deep ball just hasn't been there. Look, let's see if Lamar even plays. All right, so if Lamar doesn't play, it's going to be Tyler Huntley. And we saw Huntley definitely favoring Rashad Bateman, the rookie, last week. But besides that, even if Lamar's a full go, which I don't think he will be, it's just not happening for Hollywood. It's just that connection that you saw that was making him an every week solid wide receiver in fantasy. It's just not there. He hasn't scored a touchdown since week seven. If you take that touchdown away from Hollywood Brown, he's just a guy, right? He'll get a few catches, maybe 50, 60 yards. That's kind of what he's been doing. And again, that's fine. That's kind of Jerry Judy-ish, you know, a guy who has at least some sort of a floor, but that's not what you want rolling in the fantasy playoffs. You need some upside Unless you're a heavy favorite or you go into the weekend with a big lead, then that's fine. Roll him. But for me, I'm not trusting a guy who has a very low floor and I'm going to look elsewhere. All right. So those are my wide receiver picks for week 15. Hopefully that helps. Guys, check out Rotoballer all weekend long. That news deck especially is going to keep you busy because things are breaking all day long. So go ahead and set those winning lines for week 15. Good luck.